This is going to be your guide for EV training in Pokemon Sword and Shield. Now there's multiple methods for EV training in these games, so I strongly recommend that you watch the entire video, that way you know what method is best for you, or what the most efficient EV training method in the game is, and if the video ends up helping you out, don't forget to leave a like, share it with your friends, and comment down below. So we have three things to talk about, we have Poke Jobs, we have Vitamins, and we also have Wild Pokemon Encounters, and there's no like wild Pokemon gimmick. No SOS, no horde battling, nothing crazy like that, and there's also no super training inside of Pokemon Sword and Shield, so we're going to see which method ends up working out the best. Now, Vitamins got the most insane buff, quality of life, craziest thing to ever happen in Pokemon. You have no limit to the amount of Vitamins you can use on your Pokemon up to the cap of EVs. So, let's say I go and buy, you know, a lot of these. This is where it's also going to, like, kind of come into play that... What the best method is going to be is like wild Pokemon encounters versus money farming and then that's going to be the best EV training method for you or for the game or something like that. But let's just say I have two of these in my bag so we can now do nine, which means we'll have eleven. Previous Pokemon games, it caps out at ten because Game Freak didn't want you like fully EV training your Pokemon off of money. And this game seems like they don't really care. So let's go back to the hit points up, let's go find a fresh Pokemon, because if your Pokemon is maxed out in a stat for EVs, or if they have like full EVs, these items won't have any effect. And I've already covered like how EV training works inside of Pokemon games in my Pokemon Sword and Shield Battle Academy, so shout out to that. If you want to know what EVs do, what IVs do, if you want the most basic introduction into competitive Pokemon, check the description down below, look for the Battle Academy, that is going to tell you everything you need to know about what we're talking about. For this video, I'm just going to show you guys how to get EVs, not necessarily what they do. So then we have this Pokemon. How many balls you want to use? I can use 11. And another incredible quality of life improvement is I can use them all at once. And this just gives me kind of a pretty good way of fine tuning the effort values I want on a Pokemon. Say I only want 160 EVs on my Pokemon, well I just use 16. Done. And then I can just move on to the next stat and continue training that way, but it costs a lot of money. These are 10,000 each. So the question is, how much money can I make in response to how many EVs I can get on wild Pokemon? So that's the money baller out of control method for EV training, but what about the standard fighting Pokemon? Well, if we go to Hammerlock and we go to the central Pokemon Center, there's a BP shop here. It also says so on the map, and this is where we get our power items. So power items were buffed in Generation 7, and that buff remains in Generation 8. They now give 8 effort values for that stat whenever you fight a Pokemon. So power weight, gross hit points, speed on the anklet, band is going to be special defense, lens special attack, power belt defense, power bracer attack. It says it right there on the bottom, so if you get confused and you forget, you can just check it out like that. And these items are going to cost 10 battle points each. Which is also a really nice quality of life thing. Now in the battle tower, once you make it to master ball tier, you get like all these crazy battle point rewards and rare candies and bottle caps, so you end up with over 200 battle points, which means you can buy one or multiple of these, which is really going to help out your EV training. And it's also something you need to keep in mind, that whatever Pokemon is holding that item is the only Pokemon to get the bonus effort values. So say you want to train three Pokemon to max attack at the same time, you're going to need to spend the 30 battle points and then buy the three power bracers. But you won't need more than six, or maybe even five, because you want like a level 100 Pokemon or like a strong Pokemon in the front of the party that one-shots Pokemon you're training, then you can get effort values onto five along the way. So it's also going to be balanced out about how long it takes to get battle points, how long it takes to EV train, or just money, screw the rules, I have money kind of idea. And if you want to check if your EV training has been successful, you just need to go to the summary page of your Pokemon. So go to the right, stat matrix, hit the X button, and then this shows you an overlay with effort values. Now it turns white when you've maxed out the full 510 effort values for the Pokemon, and then 252 in a stat starts having those little sparkles around it. So depending on what you're going for, like say you want a max speed, max attack Pokemon, if you don't have speed and attack with the sparkles, you might have messed up somewhere. If it isn't white, then that means you haven't applied the four bonus points or the four bonus EVs somewhere to that Pokemon. Now for the next segment I'm going to talk about doubling your effort values and that is going to be from the Pokerust. So if you have Pokerust it means you get double EVs which makes EV training very easy. Now, for the most part, you're probably not going to get this on your own. There's like a 1 in 20,000 chance that a wild Pokemon can have Pokerust, and it needs to kind of spread it to your Pokemon via battle, or you have to capture that Pokemon, and there's no way of telling. You only know after you've caught the Pokemon, or after you've obtained Pokerust, that you go to a Pokemon Center and they say that you have it. So just kind of like, 
look for groups, look for people that have it. It's very easy to spread because it spreads between your party, and then that means you can kind of just get dozens of Pokemon Pokerust, give them to your friends, find groups, find people that are kind of spreading Pokerust as well. That's going to be the way to get it. I don't have it yet. It's kind of like a community effort at that point, but it is absolutely needed to start EV training. Once you have it once, then you just keep spreading it around. Make sure it is banked in your PC box, that way it doesn't wear off. And then you just pull it out of the box, and then share it with your Pokemon in your party, put all of them back, and just try to like keep an active Poke Rust going at all times. Now, this is where things start to get really weird for EV training, because there is no best place to EV train an individual stat inside of Pokemon Sword and Shield, and that's because of how spawning works. Then the wild area, you have a much higher cap of Pokemon that can spawn than in pretty much normal routes or anywhere else in the game. So look at all these Ghastly. If I went to fight one of these Ghastly, I would receive one effort value in special attack. Now that plus our eight that we get from our power item and then multiply by two, that means we're getting 18 EVs per Ghastly fight. Now 252 divided by 18, 14. So we just fight 14 Ghastly and that's going to be a maxed out special attack Pokemon for all the Pokemon in your party with the power item, etc. and stuff like that. And you might think, well, what about Evolve Pokemon? Because Evolve Pokemon give higher EV yields. Well, they only give two, so that means we're getting 20 EVs per battle instead of 18 for rare Pokemon, and it only means we're doing 13 battles to max a stat instead of 14. So just look for unevolved one EV Pokemon that are common. Problem is, Ghastly isn't common in normal weather. It's like fog and a few other conditions and a few other areas, and this kind of applies all over the wild area. That normally, Duskull is super common, and Duskull rewards you with special defense. So, if I wanted to train special defense, I showed up here and it's fog, that's actually not going to be as efficient as though I was training somewhere else. So it's inconsistent as to what the, like, it changes day to day with what the best place to EV train a Pokemon is going to be. In normal weather, Rolling Fields Combi has a 60% chance to spawn. That is pretty insane, and Combi gives speed EVs, but if it was any other weather, if I had any other RNG, we would not have any combi spawns in this area, so I wouldn't be able to get speed as effectively or reliably. It's just one of those things where it's like, yeah, you just kind of have to go to different places during different weather patterns and see which Pokemon are spawning, and then kind of have the EVs for the most common Pokemon memorized, or at least just understand what you're looking for. However, there are still common Pokemon that you can find on routes that will give you guaranteed EVs. Also, there's a lot of Stuffle right here. They give attack EVs, so just kind of keep that to note. Wingle, that's going to be speed. So there's all kinds of things, but this is why the wild area is so much better, because you can see all of the crazy Pokemon spawning. It's not going to be difficult to target a Pokemon that we're looking for. However, if we go to the just regular in-game routes, it's going to be a lot more claustrophobic, and there's going to be a much lower spawn cap for the Pokemon inside. So on Route 1, you can find Rookity. Rookity gives speed EVs, and you can also find Squovet. Squovet gives hit point EVs, but when we kind of come out here, it's going to be a bit more underwhelming. We got one Pokemon, we got two Pokemon, we got random Pokemon Grass, we got two more right there. So you're going to have to do some running around, and it could take a little longer inside of these routes. Now, it is consistent and is guaranteed, so it could be better in that way, but it will kind of add a bit of extra time. However, Squovet is the most common Pokemon, so this is going to be a really nice place for training hit point EVs regardless consistent, consistently all the time. Also, fun fact about Route 1, the Pokemon here have a 100% catch rate. So what you should do is if you're doing any EV training off of Rookity or Squovet, just to catch them with a Pokeball. Catching Pokemon Pokeballs increases the chance of a strong Pokemon appearing. The Yellow Aura, High EV, Egg Move Pokemon. So you can get, you can get those, and it's just kind of like optimizing your gameplay for the late game because you're going to want to catch those yellow Pokemon to kind of build up IVs for breeding, which is going to be a future guide. Don't forget to subscribe. Now, if you want to find out a Pokemon's effort value yield, just go to Bulbpedia and look it up. We can see that Pikachu gives two speed EVs, and this is also where I'm going to show you guys the guaranteed route areas for getting the EVs that you're looking for. Like I said, it could be a little less efficient depending on what's happening in the wild area, but it is good to know. So right here, we have Squovet, one hit points, that's going to be Route 1. Timber. Timber is going to be in Galar Mine number 1, so as you progress through Route 3, you go to the Galar Mine, and then that is how you get one attack EV. Roly Coley, Galar Mine, Defense EV, and then we have Snom. Now, Snom is actually, like, super common. So, on your way to Sir Chester, once you go past, like, the Route 8 maze, it has a 40% chance of spawn in that patch of grass, and then there's going to be a lot of them. So, this might be a better way of getting special attack, unless it's, like, 
foggy in the Watchtower Ruins, and there's tons of Ghastly everywhere. Also, the Pokemon could be different levels, depending on what state of the game you are. If you're worrying about EV training, you're probably going to be in the post game, which means all the Pokemon in the wild area are going to be level 60, so they might be a little more difficult for you to knock out for your team. Food for thought, unless you have a level 100, then it doesn't really matter. So that's going to be a thing. Uh, special defense is going to be Route 3. That's going to be for Gossiflor, or just kind of go to Watchtower Ruins. Watchtower Ruins has common Duskull, and those also give special defense EVs at 1. Speed, as I've talked about, Rookity, Route 1. And then there's also, like, Galarian Linoon. So if you see a lot of Linoon running around, if you're just r rolling through the wild area, that's going to be something to target. And then just all the other Pokemon and all the other random EV things that are going to pop up as you go. So we need to see how this compares. Now, I already did some testing. On Route 1, it takes about 30 to 40 seconds to catch a Squovet. So I was kind of like doing the math on that. 7 to 8 minutes, somewhere around less than 10, to fully max out a single Pokemon's effort value stat. So what that means is that if we can get more than 250,000 Pokedollars in less than 10 minutes, or actually like significantly less than 10 minutes, it's going to be better by doing this through the money method and then using vitamins. So... You can just kind of see that. Uh, there is going to be some roadblocks along the way. These basic trainers, I found that they're very easy with the Meowth. And that's going to be the money-making method. Is that you need the event Meowth. And then you end up getting like 120,000 Poké Dollars per battle. It's insane. And you just kind of play it through from there. Now, some trainers are going to get in your way. This guy, he has Steel-type Pokémon. So it's not going to be like the most fun for my Meowth. But what I end up doing is I use an X attack. So technically taking away from a little bit of money, but I don't think it really matters too much. So battle items, X attack, then I Gigantamax, then I use all of my max gold rush, then I try to finish off the opponent, and I get about, actually get a little less than half of what it takes to get the vitamins to maxed out. So while we're going through this, I guess I'll just kind of tell you guys the benefits of EV training, that you don't need to be competitive to EV train. That if you want to do general EV training inside the games, it's going to help you take on the challenge, make more money. It's going to give you a definite advantage inside of max raid battles. Or if you also catch like a wild yellow aura Pokemon and it has some competitive stats behind it, then you might as well just commit to using that Pokemon and kind of go from there. So yeah, even against a bad type matchup with Shadow Claw, I'm able to one-hit KO everything but the Steelix. And this battle took about three minutes. But then we have like the other cutscenes, the animations, and then going into the other battles. Now, Leon and the Gym Leader rematches get very problematic because those are also not going to be like super fast and super easy to beat. And what that tells me is that it takes about the same time to buy your way to EVs for a single Pokemon than it does to just kind of run out into a route and then grind up and get 14 quick battles. Also, quick side note, I just realized I didn't have my Luck Incense. Luck Incense is what doubles the amount of money that you make. I did a money making guide. If you haven't watched it, check it out. So that's probably why I was one-shotting things. I had extra damage from the Choice Band from doing EV training in the wild area. It's kind of a weird thing, but um, yeah, I don't, I don't think it's going to be like just the best overall method, and it's probably worth just investing time into getting battle points and then speeding up the EV training massively for any Pokemon that you choose to EV train at that time. Also, when it comes to money, you can just have like a million Poké Dollars if you're just grinding tons of max raid battles, or if you're getting tons of items just that are respawning in the wild area every day. So you can also sell those and then buy the EV boosting items. That could also be another way of just like passively EV training while doing other things. And then again, there's no better feeling than instantly EV training a Pokémon off of the max vitamins. And if you want to save money, what you can do is if all of your Pokémon have Poké Rust, you just put in all the vitamins. You still have to use 25. Poké Rust doesn't apply to vitamins. And then you just go out and faint a wild Pokemon or two. So I'll save you 10k right there. And then last method for gaining EVs. Next up we're going to talk about subtracting EVs. It's going to be Poke Jobs. Because once you make it to Hammerlock, the university is unlocked. And this is weird stuff. If you put a Pokemon in here, after one hour, they gain four effort values. So you need to put them in here for three days. And then that's only going to be one stat maxed EVs. But it's up to ten Pokemon. And you can do that for multiple stats. So, if you don't think you're going to be doing any competitive Pokemon, or you're not going to need any of those Pokemon, just, like, throw them in here, and then do that for a couple days until they're maxed out, swap the stat, and then in a week, you're going to have a ton of Pokemon that are fully EV trained passively for free. And it kind of works the other way around. Say I want to train 20 attacking sweepers. I'd put 10 in for speed, I put 10 in for attack, do that for 3 days, and then I swap them, and then I do the ones that had speed and attack, the ones that had an attack and speed, and now I have 20 Pokemon fully EV trained at the end of a week for completely passive, few minutes of investment, just kind of send them off to university. 
I've kind of done this before when it came to the Pokepelago, and this is actually like quicker and easier than Pokepelago. You don't have to do as much menuing to do it. So it's actually, it feels a lot better to do the University than Pokepelago, and after a couple of days, you have EV trained Pokemon. So there's a couple things you can do. If you're just doing like mass breeding projects, maybe even just do that. What you do is you do a mass breeding project, and if you have several of the same species of Pokemon that are competitively viable, just dump them off in here passively and check on them every once in a while, and then you can just be like, hey, I'm offering a fully EV trained, competitive ready Pokemon just like that, trade me one of your fully EV trained competitive ready Pokemon. So that can also save you a lot of time depending on the Pokemon that you're going for, especially if you're EV training and breeding very valuable and prized Pokemon. And lastly, we have reducing EVs, because maybe you have a Pokemon that you trained throughout the story and you want to kind of refresh it, like your starter Pokemon. You have Cinderace, well, you can't stop EV training. That if you're just out there fighting every Pokemon in the story, that Cinderace is going to be gaining effort values. Also with the EXP share, if you forget you have a Pokemon in and it starts gaining the wrong effort values, you are going to need berries to get rid of that. So, these are the special berries, that when it says a Pokemon is going to lower base points, it is going to lose those stats. So we give a Pokemon Kelpsy berries, and then that Pokemon will lose 10 EVs. So the opposite effect of the vitamins, and you can find these by shaking berry trees in the wild area. So we have Pomeg, Kelpsy, Qualot, Hondu, Greppa, and Tomato berries, and then they just tell you what they do. Now you can find these, like I said, by shaking trees in the wild area, and there's a few trees. Like, if you get a Tomato berry, or if you get one of these berries from that tree, then that tree is going to be dropping more of those berries, which you just have to kind of go around and start shaking them. One tree I do know about is the tree that's right outside Giant's Mirror. This one right here. So we go and talk to this tree, and as we can see, when berries start to fall out, Kelpsy Berry. So you can go and shake this. It's the it's the gamble game. Do you want to risk losing some of your berries if you shake too much? I just kind of go for three. I don't want to get greedy. I call it right there. And that's going to be good for reducing some effort values. So eventually, if you have enough berries, you can just fully reset a Pokemon's EVs or get rid of some nasty EVs that you accidentally didn't want. And then just random trees are going to give you random berries. Like, I just got a Ganlon, a Tomato Berry, and a Lum Berry. So I can get some EV reducing berries from some random trees, but I know that that one at least just always drops them. So this is going to be in the Giant's Hat by Lake Outrage. Like, if we just go over here, that's the lake, and then you cross the lake, and that's where you get Dreepy and Ditto and all those other Pokemon. So, again, Pokemon, berries, do that. I think that's kind of everything when it comes to EV training and Pokemon Sword and Shield. Some incredible best-ever quality of life, and then it's not like insane like with horde battles one shotting doing a couple hordes and then maxing out evs really quickly it is individual pokemon battles but it doesn't really take that long and you kind of have to earn getting your pokemon ev trained with some of the other methods that are at your disposal and then i guess at the end of the video for the people that didn't watch the pokemon sword and shield battle academy and have no idea what evs are or why they're trying to get them and why it took 16 minutes of explaining just everything that you need to know about effort values they're needed for competitive pokemon but the most basic thing about it is that four evs Four effort values equals one stat point at level 100, which means you get plus 63 to a stat at level 100. And then you can do that to two stats, and then you also get like a bonus four EVs. You can just splash into another random stat or something like that. So this is why it also isn't only needed for competitive. You just make your in-game Pokemon stronger to do natural in-game things, and that's kind of it. So hope you guys in. Enjoy the video. Hope you all have a nice day. Thank you very much for watching.